Now the handshake between President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta and Raila Amolo Dinga changed the political landscape in this country completely. And one man who was affected the most was none other than the duty president William Samuel Ruto. Because the only thing which was standing between the duty president and the presidency was actually the remainder of President Uru Kenyatta's term in office. So the duty president was sure of winning the presidency in 2022 because they had the numbers. Uhuru was coming from the larger Mount Kenya region and William Ruto was coming from Rift Valley. So the two regions had the tyranny of numbers. And the duty president also believed that there are certain regions in this country where the president could not get votes. But as William Ruto, he could get votes in those regions. Places like Coast, places like, places like uh, Kisi, places like Western Kenya. And also, by that time, it was not clear whether Raila Odinga was going to contest. So which meant even Nyanza was going to be open for an, a contest. And add the fact that the duty president also believed, because he was part of this government, he also believed that he had the system. But this handshake changed everything. Sasa wale nataka ni waambie hamuwezi kunifukuza ODM ati mkanifuata ati muna nifukuza jubili. Haiwezekani. Iyo, iyo haiwezekani bala. Ati wanajibanga huko, porojo, fitina, oo, oh, tutavunja jubili. Watavi, watavunja jubili ya nani? Iyo ni ndoto ya mchana nani? Iyo musahau kapsa Muende <laughs> Mutafute kazi ingine ya kufanya Iyo haiwezekani Tunaelewana Tuko zote Therefore I want to categorically state That we have no space For gossip And propaganda And conmanship In our party and in our government We don't have space for those things so if you think uh, you are going to use the handshake to export conmanship into our party, we are telling you that is not going to happen. So the handshake changed everything and the politics of this country. But I've observed a lot of things of late. And I'm coming to realize that as a matter of fact, this handshake is actually a blessing to the duty president William Samuel Ruto. So today I want us to look at why the handshake between Raila Molo Dinga and President Uhuru Kumge Kenyatta is actually turning out to be a blessing in disguise for the duty president William Samuel Ruto. But before we do that, if you are watching this video for the first time, I want you to take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. So you click subscribe button and then check the notifications, notification button. That's the only time you'll be notified. Now back to the main issue. The, the handshake changed the politics in this country. That's one thing that all of us must agree to. The other fact that we must agree to is that this handshake has also affected the deputy president in a big way. For example, the deputy president no longer enjoys the incumbency advantage, which means the deputy president can no longer go to Kiambu and use government resources to advance his politics. Previously, what the deputy president would do, he would go, for example, to Kilifi, to Aisha Jumwa's constituency, then launch a road. And after launching a government road, then he would even say this road was launched by the deputy president William Ruto. So that was giving him mileage. All those changed because the president, through executive order number one of 2019, removed all those roles from him and assigned Fred Okengo Matiang. And the other fact that we must also agree to, that as, as a deputy president, he was able to raise campaign funds using his people. Like for example, there are parastatals in, parastatals in this country which are normally used to fund campaigns. Kenya Pipeline, Kenya Power, and the duty president had, strate has, had strategically placed these people in most of those parastatals. Most of them have actually been kicked out or are currently facing 
corruption investigations in this country. So his sources of funding has also been affected. And also, the system. When you talk of the system, we're not talking of maybe the system which is going to, to help him rig. A system is just people who will tell you, this is what these guys are doing. This is what Raila is doing. You need to do this. We are going to fix IBC. So who are we going to identify to put in this place? We are, we are making changes in the military. Who should we put there? Is there a, my guy, is there a college in somewhere who can sit somewhere there? Now we are going to do these kind of changes in the, this particular, in the judiciary. Now can we identify a friendly judge? Now because he's now out of government, he can't do all those. But you need all those ones to become the president of the Republic of Kenya. But despite all those, I strongly believe that this particular handshake has helped the deputy president in so many ways. Number one, the war on corruption. In this country, William Ruto was, William Ruto's other name was actually corruption. You would type what is William Ruto's other name on Google. It will return for you William Samuel Ruto. So William Ruto was the face of corruption in this country. And when President Ruto Kenyatta took office, you, you, you will all remember, he made a lot of changes. And those changes affected some of his people. If you look at the people who have been fired because of corruption in this country, most of them are allies of the deputy president, William Samuel Ruto. People who are facing court today. And the deputy president took that. And I remember at one point he was very clear that he was, going, he was not going to allow his name to be painted everywhere as the most corrupt guy. But this has not turned out to be a blessing because the duty president is no longer part of the government. And since he left government, since he was kicked out of government, because that's the reality, the duty president was kicked out of government. Since he was kicked out of government in uh, March 2, 2018, still we are still witnessing corruption, including the shameless thievery or shameless theft of donations by Jack Ma to this country to help fight COVID. So all these are now happening when the deputy president is out of government. So the deputy president and his team are now telling Kenyans that Simulukum Nasema Mimi Ndio corrupt. What is now happening in government now? Who, is it Ruto or, or who? So that has helped him in a way. So at least the duty president can now stand somewhere and talk about corruption in government because he believes that everybody is corrupt. So today, nobody can actually throw mud at the deputy president as being the most corrupt individual in this country. So the government is corrupt. So William Ruto was corrupt. Yes, he has, he has accepted that, but now he's out of government. Why are are officials still stealing. And remember the latest one is actually involving even the family, close family members of President Uru Kenyatta. So that's a good music to the ears of the duty president William Samuel Ruto. So it has helped him in that aspect. Number two, I think because the duty president is no longer part of the government, he's no longer part of the system. And Uru Kenyatta the, the man who was hoping to endorse him and to help him is now with Raila Molodinga. I think it has given the duty president the opportunity and the chance to focus on his 2022 presidential bid. So of late, if you've been watching the duty president, he's actually focusing his campaign on 2022 because he doesn't want to take any chance. In uh, central Kenya, for example, the duty president realized that Uhuru Kenyatta was likely to, to endorse Raila Molodinga or to endorse someone else or even Gideon Moy. He realized that. So what did he do? He went and went directly to the people on the ground. So by the time the president realized, the deputy president already had the masses behind him. So as we speak now, Uhuru Kenyatta is trying to regain control of the, the, the masses in his, his own backyard. Whether he's going to succeed or not is something we can't tell now. But the fact is, the duty president was focused. Today, the duty president is inviting every other youth groups, women groups, and focus groups like religious organizations and the rest to his current office. Who is doing this 
because he's well aware that the system is against him. So if he was sitting in government today, I'm sure the deputy president, for example, would not be holding those campaign rallies in Karen. He would be going to the ground and with the hope that he was with the system. So that has helped him focus on his 2022 presidential bid. Number three, I think because of all this, he has won the hearts of many Kenyans. Many Kenyans who now sympathize with him because they believe now that the duty president is just being targeted. For example, when you were saying he was a corrupt guy, so Kenyans expected the government of President Uru Kenyatta to deal ruthlessly with corruption. Uru Kenyatta himself told Kenyans that whether you are my brother, whether you are my closest ally, and you are involved in this, we are going to deal with you. So today, Kenyans are very bitter and very angry, but certain individuals are taking advantage of a crisis which the country is facing to gain from that particular pandemic. So Kenyans are now start, have, have, started, have started actually sympathizing with the deputy president. If you go to central Kenya, what they will tell you is that this guy, Alitus idea, he helped rule Kenyatta once, twice, and third. In fact, the second time and the third time, it was basically William Ruto campaigning for Uru Mugai Kenyatta. And they promised to give him the presidency. And according to them, the duty president has not committed any sin against President Uru Kenyatta or against the region. So why is he being victimized? So they are now sympathizing with him. And he, because of this, he has been able now to rally almost everybody who is against President Uru Kenyatta and those who are against the deputy, I mean, against Raila Morodinga. All these guys now are now supporting him. So he has gained a bit of sympathy out of that. Number four, the burden of Jubilee failure. Jubilee government has failed. That's the reality. Jubilee government was a government which was designed to fail from the way it was formed. And I know there's people who voted for Jubilee even on this platform. Even in the first time when they were going to vote for Jubilee, the second term, sorry, the first time there were hopes. In the second term of President Ruke Nyata in 2017, when they were casting their votes, they had known that Jubilee government had actually failed. But still, they ended up voting for Jubilee Party. So Jubilee Party today has failed. There's nothing, when it comes to corruption, they have not fought. When it comes to healthcare, it has collapsed, whether it's county government or the rest. When it comes to roads, they, have, they are doing one, two, three. So generally, the economy is bad. Economy is doing very badly. And because the economy is doing very badly, the guys carrying that burden is Jubilee government. So Kenyans want to do away with Jubilee government very fast. So they want to do away with this government. But the duty president is now not part of it. The person who is carrying this burden, Jubilee burden, is actually Huru Kenyatta, who is going home, and Raila Molodinga. Even people who voted for Jubilee are now blaming Raila Molodinga for the sins committed by the Jubilee government, by President Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta himself. So because of that, I strongly believe that it's working to the advantage of the duty president. He's going to go into this election without the burden of Jubilee government. Remember, Jubilee Party, remember Jubilee Party has been taken away from the deputy president. And I'm sure in 2022, it will take a miracle for the deputy president to contest on Jubilee Party. So if this will happen, this will help him further. Because he will contest on another party and that party will not be associated with the Jubilee. Probably Jubilee shall have entered into an agreement with Kanu to support Gideon Moy or with the NASA to support Raila Odinga or agreed in, in some other coalition agreement. So the name deputy president will not be associated with the Jubilee government. So that's the reality. And lastly, it has also helped the duty president to craft a team, his own team. I've always opined on this platform severally that the biggest mistake the duty president has always committed politically is failing to craft his own team. So that if he decided today to leave Jubilee government, then this team would definitely just move with him. He failed to do that. You go to coast, he's been banking on people like Kasha Juma. But because now he disagreed with Uru Kenyatta, and Uru Kenyatta had the handshake, the duty president is now able to identify those who are with him 
and those who are not with him. Remember, when he was the duty president, he was very powerful. Because power attracts people. And because now he's no, he's no longer the deputy president, he's just deputy president by name, most of these people have, have uh, taken off from him. So which means the ones remaining with him are the Norway people who believes in him. And that's why you've been seeing the duty president with people like Aisha Joma. You've been seeing him with the people like Silva Nusosoro. You've been seeing him with the people like Jichopevo. This would not have been possible if the duty president was still with the president Rukinyata. If he was still with the president Rukinyata, it means he, he, he would have been forced, for example, to work with someone like uh, David Murad, who doesn't believe in him. In him. So you would believe that he had people then at the end, tail end there, some of these people are going to dump him. So now the duty president has the opportunity to craft his own team. But the biggest question which Kenyans are asking and which I'm asking here, do you think the duty president can become the president of the Republic of Kenya without the support of the system? Do you think so? And do you know anybody who has won against the system in this country? I know most of you will tell me Kibaki. And I want to remind you that Kibaki was just used to hold for President Rukunyata. Because the system knew that removing uh, Moi and then bringing Kenyatta was going to complicate the equation. And remember also, Kibaki, in my view, and I strongly believe, was part of the system. Kibaki was used by the system to deny Kenneth Matiba the presidency and also to deny Jaramogo Gingo Dinga. So if Jaramogo Gingo Dinga was uh, Jaramogo Gingo Dinga, Moi and Matiba on the ballot, Matiba was going to win. Because their combined votes, Moi had only 30 something percent. So he was rewarded. He was rewarded by the system. Raila won elections in 2007. Raila was with actually with William Ruto. So do you want to tell me that that team of Raila Dinga, William Ruto, being denied? Raila was with Ruto, Mudavadi, Kosi Lekwayao, everywhere, apart from Central Kenya. The system still decided, took away the victory. Tell me, I want you to tell me, you looking at me, how the duty president will win against the system. Tell me, just tell me, for comments. Thank you guys, and if you are watching this video for the first time, Please, I want you to take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to thank you guys for your continued support. I'm actually, it's late in the night, so I'm taking coffee so that I remain alert. Yeah. So I want you guys to continue supporting the channel just by sharing the video, giving the video a thumbs up, and also dropping your comments. And those who would always want to reach out to me, my WhatsApp number is still the same. 0777-741323. And to those who would want to buy me coffee, I'm still open to coffee. So you can always send me coffee and uh, just drop me my, uh, a message on my WhatsApp number. The one I've read there, 0777-741323. That one is not for m -Pesa. It's purely for WhatsApp. So just drop me a message there. Then I can direct you on how you can do this. Thank you guys. And please, may you have a good day. It's exactly, yeah, it's, it's around 15 minutes past midnight. Thank you guys. Because of your support now, at least we can record video at night. And I hope it's clean. Bye-bye.